Turns out these videos are pretty fun for me because I'm learning stuff too. Hey, I'm Ben. I'm a huge fly fisherman, and today we're gonna do another fish facts video and talk about redfish. The first saltwater fish that I ever caught on a fly fish pole was a redfish. It's this fish right here. If you're wondering, yes, that is a beer suit. I used to fish in it a lot, like a lot, a lot. Anyway, redfish. My first saltwater fish on a fly, and I think that's fitting because redfish are a great introduction to saltwater fly fishing. For one thing, they are a great fly rod fish. As my buddy Ron says, I think redfish are just about the perfect fly rod fish. I mean, they're abundant. Redfish also grow big, they pull hard, they take flies readily, but they get difficult just often enough to keep it interesting. But I think what makes them the best fly rod target is that redfish are the strippers of the fish world. They give more of a visual display above the waterline than any fish I've ever seen. They'll tail a lot, they'll crawl along banks that are shallow with their cleavage showing out the water. They really Really, really give you a visual sight fishing display. If there was any one thing I would change about redfish, it would be that they can't jump. If you can fix that, then you really do have the perfect fly rod fish. So all of that, but also redfish can be very forgiving to anglers. If you can put a fly in front of them without scaring them, they're gonna eat it. I'm not gonna say that redfish are easy to catch, but sometimes they can be a little bit dumb. I know some people like to brag about how difficult their local redfish are, and that's neat. There are a lot of picky redfish out there, but there are more redfish that would eat a bottle cap if you threw it at them. Okay, now let's get into some facts. The scientists the scientific name is Cyanops ocelotus. I think that might be how you say it. The redfish was originally described by Carl Linnaeus in 1766. If you're a biology dork like me, you know that name. Linnaeus is the father of modern taxonomy, the system we use for describing and classifying organisms. And apparently he squeezed a redfish one time. So, Cyanops ocelotus. Cyanops is Greek for perch-like marine fish. That's a bit of a stretch, I think. Ocelotus means I like colored spot, which is of course referring to the spot on a redfish's caudal peduncle. It's called an ocellus and a lot of fish have it. It's a fake eye. So if a fish is getting attacked by a predator, hopefully that predator will go for the tail with the fake eye instead of the head. It's a lot easier for fish to live without a tail than without a head. Besides their scientific name, redfish go by a lot of common names. Redfish, of course, also red drum, channel bass, spot tail bass, grass bass, but I think Larry just made that one up. Cause one time he also told me that mullet have eyelids. A large redfish, like over 20 pounds, is called a bull red. A small redfish, like under slot, is called a rat red or puppy drum. Yes, they are cute. Redfish belong to the family Cyanidae, the drum family, which also includes croakers, black drum, freshwater drum, or gasper goo, that's fun to say, corbina, speckled trout, and tons of others. Look at all these genera of different drum type fish. They're called drums because of the noise that they make. It's a low thumping sound, kind of like a drum. They do it by rubbing muscles against their swim bladder. They do it mostly during spawning activities, but also when you stab them in the face and drag them over the gunwale of a boat. Redfish inhabit coastal areas of the Western Atlantic Ocean, from Massachusetts to Northern Mexico. As I said earlier, redfish inhabit coastal areas. Estuaries, bays, lagoons, tidal creeks. They are urihaline, which means that they can tolerate a wide variety of salinities. Ron took me to a spot once that had smallmouth buffalo, bowfin or shoe pick, that's another fun one, gar, and redfish, all in one place. Except for the redfish, those are all fishes that are generally associated with fresh water. You can find redfish over muddy bottoms, but they prefer stuff like grass flats or oyster beds, because that's where their food is. Makes sense, doesn't it? So what do they eat besides bottle caps? 
Well, anything really, but mostly shrimp, crabs, and small fish. Your flies should look like those things and behave like them. They eat a lot of pokey stuff and use crushers in their throat to basically chew their food. Redfish can live for 30 years. Adults are typically 18 to 40 inches long, but they can get over 50 inches. The biggest one ever caught was in the Outer Banks and it was 94 pounds. This is that fish. Can you imagine that? A hundred pound redfish? That is huge. Redfish have been a food fish ever since people were catching them, but that all got turbocharged when this guy, Paul Prudhomme, made blackened redfish a popular thing. That one dish had a significant impact on redfish populations. That's a good segue to conservation. Redfish aren't endangered, but they do face some threats. Let's talk about two specific ones in Louisiana. One is the commercial Menhaden fleet. These commercial fish are netting schools of menhaden, which are used for a lot of things, but omega-3 fatty acids are a big part of it. These commercial fishing boats operate near shore, and there are two things happening here. Menhaden are an important food source for redfish, and they are being removed. Also, in the process of catching menhaden, the nets kill a lot of redfish. The commercial menhaden fishery in Louisiana is pulling a classic pincers move on redfish. Another threat threat to redfish in Louisiana is bow fishing. But first we need to talk about slot limits. A slot limit is when it is legal to harvest fish only within a certain size range or slot. In Louisiana, they recently narrowed this slot, which is a good thing. It protects more redfish from being blackened. But listen to how stupid this is. Louisiana allows bow fishing for redfish, and those bow fishermen must comply with the slot limit regulations. Do you think they're measuring fish before putting an arrow through them and killing them? They are not. They shoot a fish, and then if it's not in the slot, what do you think they do? Yes, they chuck it back in the water with a giant hole in it. Catch and release, I guess? The idea of a slot limit for bow fishing is dumb. Just let them kill a limit. Fewer fish will be wasted. So that's pretty frustrating, but let's end on a positive note. Aquaculture of redfish is becoming more of a thing. We can farm them. That means we can put more of them on your dinner plate and we can put them in the water. Louisiana is currently experimenting with stocking redfish. We'll see how that goes. And that's gonna do it for this video about redfish. Thank you as always for taking the time out of your day to watch one of my huge fly fisherman videos. I'll be back as soon as I can with another video about fly fishing fishing for you. Until then, leave a comment and tell me what fish you want to hear about next and stay huge. One time I hooked a redfish and fought it for a minute or two and then the hook pulled out. I immediately cast at that fish again and he ate the fly.